So as I've mentioned before, this is a Raven Stinger, the rarest variant of the Nerf Raven. And I think that it is, of course, the most suitable candidate to install our very special Dr. Snicka's Raven prototype flywheel cage. And so I've chosen this one, despite the fact that it's got a few shortcomings to transform into that monstrous primary. And there's not much else to say. I think that by the time it's done, it'll look like something that was always destined for greatness. So let's crack it open and get to work gutting out all of these internals. It looks like somebody might have been in here before me so we may have to clean up some work before we can start our very own. So inside this Raven Stinger I can tell you that the damage to the jam door is the only thing that somebody did to this. It looks like they just twisted it off because they didn't want to do a proper mod job. So other than that everything appears stock which is excellent because it means that it'll be really easy to come put this into place and it looks like it's going to fit perfectly oh i'm so excited for this i wish you guys could see like just how stoked i am i i have something special enough that i don't have to paint it and i've got something a hundred percent unique to install into it i'm just so stoked let's get to work so forever ago I did just a ton of Raven commissions and that taught me a few tricks about how to kind of position these switches, the high amperage yield switches inside the shell. And so I'm actually doing it a little bit differently for this one because I've found a way to mechanically fasten it and use some of the original components. And I'm taking it apart after testing it so I can show you that this actually is just pinned through the brass that originally held the roller on this switch. And it's actually at a slight cant, which is interesting, but it means that everything will be frictiony and very snappy. And then to make sure that it returns quickly every time, I actually found a way to, after shearing this off so that it no longer impacts as a lock, it just works as kind of like a, a return spring almost for the rev switch. So I'm actually really happy with this as a unit and now it's time to move on to something that I've done in the past and if you want to see a more detailed version of this check out the Celine Raven but I'm going to have to add this so that in addition to having a compression spring as the return I also want it to have an extension spring coming out of the back here and attaching into this well here and the reason for that is that if it has two springs it'll have more force and it'll be much snappier moving through the magazine you need more finger strength but since I used to play paintball and this one is a hundred percent tuned to me it should not be too much of an issue although I have passed off Ravens that I did as commissions for people using this kind of retortioning mod and and it was too much force for like rapid fire so don't do this unless you feel like you have adult sized hands and adult sized I guess hand strength or grip strength but it, it is a much nicer kind of response from the Raven and really emulates how the strife trigger pull feels if you do it this way. So this is super duper impressive, the foresight that Dr. Snick has had here. These are little rubber pads that align with the screw holes inside the 130 sized tin can motors. And so it kind of stretches over like so. And then this is lathed just so this will fit in. Now that padding means that there's a little bit of extra protection from wobble in here and then you can come in and really lock it down so there's no wobble whatsoever with these little nano screws that he includes. So they are in fact threaded for Phillips and should be really really easy to uh, yeah, I mean, that couldn't be any simpler, and it really is, like, in there to win it. So I'm going to finish installing these motors in, and then we'll strap on his super, super precise flywheels. You can see there's a little bit of dart buildup because I was testing my polarity earlier, and uh, it works, I promise. Oh, boy, so I forgot what a huge pain this was. So for starters, I want to talk about the flywheel cage. I have got it. Uh, tuned where I want it to be. I solder these leads to NASA grade specifications because over engineering is fun And I put one up here and one down here so that there's no chance of them splicing virtually no matter what happens And then down here you can see that the real trick to these is making sure that these concave flywheels are aligned properly I think I've gotten really close there. I might be like a millimeter off on this one but I don't want to push it too far and accidentally overdo it because I'm really happy with where these motors are situated. Again those have been screwed in with their gel pads so they are also pretty pretty vibration safe and I'm happy with that. Now I want to talk about this really quick. I kind of keep this right here. This goes on top of the plane. This is actually I 
use a soldering iron to kind of melt a little hole in and then I thread through there and then you can see that now we have a very good alignment as well as a agreement between the compression spring and the extension spring giving you honestly like a better trigger pull than a strife if we're going to be completely um, frank about it like this is superior and and really feels nice once you've got the trigger installed and the shell closed so happy with this going to lock this down happy with this going to start fitting the wires in and then we need to actually get the switch into the shell but this is getting pretty close we're moving at a decent pace all those raven commissions paid off uh, one quick look here at how I set my switches for those that haven't seen it before. This is a paintbrush that I use, one of my nano brushes, and then this is a long shot screw. They're just anchored into the epoxy putty so that this literally can't go anywhere. And, as always, uh, you should be testing constantly because once this epoxy putty cures, it is donezo. So, it sounds like success to me. I'm pretty happy with that. I know you guys didn't think I was going to build one of the coolest ravens ever without putting a voltmeter in it. So, I've taken this voltmeter, I've tested it, I've put in an always open switch which should be ready for, uh, actually it's going to sit right about there. But then this will fit up and in here. And so I just filed this slot next to sanding. Filing is one of the, hey you can still see my sharpie line there. Filing is one of my least favorite things to do in this hobby. And now, this tape will keep it exactly where we want it to be and aligned so that I can put the proper adhesives in place and really lock this in. And then, we get to file the other side. But that should be pretty good by the time it's all done. I think that this is going to be really, really cool. I'm definitely going for a sleeper look where all of the modifications are very difficult to tell from the outside that they ever happened, which is why we're doing things like using the original battery tray and stuff. But this needed to be done and I needed to be able to read it. I've seen people hide them up here before, but I didn't want to do that. All right, guys, so this is really, really cool. But before I show it to you, I want to hook up some test leads again just always testing always making sure things are working properly and oh yeah so you can see that this is an almost perfect fit for this voltmeter and i need to come in and kind of blacken the edges so that it's less ob obvious that there's millimeters of differences here but that's going to fit in there very very nicely now the other thing that i've done is i've come out and completely hollowed out this battery area and i know that it looks a little bit rough in fact it looks a lot a bit rough if we're gonna be completely honest but cool thing about that is that now it looks like nothing at all is wrong with it and this should house our lipo very safely very securely so I'm happy with this I think that the shell is more or less done now all we have to do is get all of our custom internals hooked up and ready to go but we're very very close at this point and that's very exciting so you guys can see here that the voltmeter is in the back and its leads are coming up around underneath the magazine, I guess, hold point. Then this is the magazine guide. They come through here. These are actually the main leads for the battery coming out down through here. Now, the rest of this is just, this is a splice into the positive lead so that this is an always on switch. Then there's a splice to the negative lead underneath right actually here and then Hmm. I think that that covers it. I've already talked about how I did this switch. It's just absolutely perfect. It's a really good blend of mechanical and then friction fitting with uh, no uh, adhesives other than the epoxy putty, which is excellent. Now we're going to come in, and this is the last lead, is making sure that our, our negative here on the motors that will lead to the, the eventual lipo pack has a, a really good capillary action solder going through there and I'm uh I'm really happy with that <coughs> don't <coughs> hmm. don't ever solder over things I'm only doing it for the video normally I put this up there and do it differently but this is <coughs> whoa um, solid now it actually cools very quickly and I'm going to take some electrical tape and do my kind of homemade uh, heat shrink on this as well similar to how it's been done here and then the circuit is pretty much done all I have to do is add the barrel and the bells and whistles find a jam door from 
probably that other stinger I want it to look completely stinger by the time it's done and then this is actually like pretty pretty close I'm so happy with this I think it's gonna be really cool so I finally found an issue with the Dr. Snickers kit in addition to being just perfect it has one fatal flaw it's seated a little bit too high up into the blaster so this dart pusher the stock dart pusher actually can't quite reach far enough to get the darts in now that might be because I changed the way that the pusher mech works to get a much cleaner trigger pull but for whatever reason I'm coming in and adding small dots of two-part epoxy because it's clear and it'll essentially build this up so that the darts will in fact push far enough to engage the flywheels hopefully that works all right, so this is my sleeper stinger raven with the Dr. Snickers flywheel cage. You can see that in through there. The always on switch means that it, uh, its voltmeter displays constantly until it has a clip inside. Clip depressing this switch turns off the voltmeter, voltmeter on. You can see this is at 12.4 volts. Under load, it's at about 12.3. That is because there is a 3S lipo tucked very carefully into this battery tray but since i did not have to mol uh, modify the battery tray in any sort of way other than to carve out some area here or uh, sanding the back end of the door itself this is a, a pretty much full sleeper with the exception of the voltmeter in the back this looks like it's stock so that's really really cool now two things that i want to talk about one I had to add some extra brass in the center, just extending and widening the barrel through the blaster. Dr. Snickers himself recommended that. He said that it kept the accuracy increases uh, prevalent throughout the build as opposed to uh, where in the strife you don't need it because the strife is very short on the Raven. Adding to that brass is helpful now. I also had to build up an epoxy ramp on my pusher mechanism because this is a prototype and the darts were not reaching with a, a standard thing. And that's just because the flywheels are a little bit further forward on this blaster. But after playing with it for one SE and C war, I can tell you that the, the hype is real. The blaster is insane. It does everything that it was slated to do. I think that it's hitting a little bit harder than it would be with a stock flywheel setup. But then more importantly, the accuracy is just awesome. Now, some of these darts are worn. It really liked the uh, the brand new darts that I was feeding it at the war, but this is this is cool. There's more grippable area on the darts. It's a raven, so it's very compact and easy to maneuver with one hand out or up against your body. I ran it on a single point sling on this side, and so I would frequently just like grab it, pull, and fire all in one motion, which looks like that. And so... Let's, uh, let's actually stabilize it and fire through this clip and then I have one more loaded up just because I really want you guys to get a great feel for this blaster. And I'm so happy that I did it in a stinger body. Like I just think that this is a really special Raven right now, especially since there aren't a lot of these floating around. So... So, I mean, hopefully that's a pretty good demonstration. The, the majority of those darts were hitting my targets very far away. Again, very worn darts. Using new darts, I was getting just very, very crisp groupings, which were awesome. But I couldn't be happier with this blaster. I couldn't be happier with the, the prototype cage, even though it took a little bit of tweaking to get it working. I'm sure that he'll, I mean, the guy is a master machi machinist. I'm sure he will figure out a quick fix. Everything in this kit was like, to the letter it came with the right screws to lock it into the the tin can motors it came with the right rubber gaskets to hold them off so the the flywheels and motor cage become one giant thing which really reduces the overall operating vibrations which is just so so cool and i mean i'm i'm very honored that he chose me to to be the guinea pig for the flywheel cage just because i'm such a, a big fan of the the raven so thank you so much to dr snickers thank you to you guys for watching this was a lot of fun to build i just love working with prototypes and i i can't wait to to show you what i do with the strife rapid strike cage i still haven't locked in on an idea yet but i've got a couple of ideas that that i'm kicking around and i'm narrowing it down and 
Uh, I think that it's going to be really, really great. One of the ideas uh, that I'm kicking around came from the comment section in the the Snickers Flywheel Cage review video. So thank you very much for that. Um, you guys are awesome. Really, really helpful in my comment section. Way better than the, the pollution that happens in a lot of other creators' videos. So thank you for that. You guys are awesome. This kid is awesome. And thank you for watching.